Hi, I'm Todd Kelly from Kelly Racing. If you're watching the Winton round last weekend, you would have seen that Rick unfortunately had an engine failure and ultimately a DNF in one of the races. I'm always really interested to know what goes on when there's an engine failure, but no one ever gets to see behind the scenes and the broken parts that result in the DNF. So here we are in our engine shop, and I'm gonna do my best to explain exactly what happened in Rick's engine at Winton. So we have a quad cam engine here that starts out as a Nissan VK56. We obviously do a huge amount of work to turn it into a supercar engine. But when the engine fails during the race, all of the data crew are obviously working extremely hard with the information that we get over the telemetry to try and isolate where the problem is, which could be a fuel issue, an electrical issue, or a mechanical issue. Uh, Rick did report that it felt like the engine dropped down onto four cylinders, so you could be reasonably confident that it would not be fuel. So as the car pulled into the garage, the crew split up and did two things. Uh, one tried to isolate any electrical issues, so here we have the coil packs, and as you can see there's four, so we have one bank of coil packs uh, for each side of the engine. So. It could easily be a connector or any issue here with the wire getting um, cut or melt for some reason would just cut one side of the engine down, which, which was plausible. So the guys went through that and had a look, couldn't find anything. At the same time, uh, we pull the filter out of the car, this is the oil filter, to see if there's any mechanical issues. And if there's a mechanical issue anywhere inside the engine, you normally get a lot of uh, what we call swarf, like swarf from a machine shop of metal or plastic that ends up in this filter. And as the guys pulled the filter out, it was actually full of aluminium, uh, which means we unfortunately can't dust that off and, and send Rick back out. Then the suspense absolutely kills us because we can't actually pull anything apart on the engine until we get supercar's technical people here and approval to remove the seals on the engine. So this is an example of what's all over all of the engines in supercars. Uh, as the engine gets built, the, the technical crew come along and seal all the engine so that you can't open it at all. Uh, if the technical team would like to pull your engine out and go and test it on their dyno in Queensland, uh, they'll do that and then they can strip your whole engine down and know exactly what settings you had on the camshafts and all of your tolerances, the whole deal, um, without you being able to change anything. So we had to wait till Monday morning to get the seal cut off to be able to look inside the engine and work out what went wrong. So the seals finally come off. The first thing we do is pull the valve covers off, which the guys had done, remove the cover, and remove the front cover. And what we found initially was this cam bolt had broken and rattled around and the whole front gear had come off the camshaft and the chain um, and everything on the front of this bank had basically disconnected causing all of the valves to, to hit the piston. So once the camshaft stopped turning, the pistons are still going up and down and some of these poor little valves are stuck in midair and the piston comes up, hits the valve and the poor little guy gets bent and then it's all over for that, uh, that engine. That was a little bit strange that that bolt had broken that's something that we'd never had before. So we kept dismantling, or well the guys did, I didn't actually do anything, uh, dismantling the engine. And the end result was, and this has never happened before, is some of the lifter bore material, so the actual casting of the cylinder head, had broken away and was floating around inside the engine, which is very unusual. Like we said, we've not actually seen that. And as it was floating around the engine, it's found its way under one of the lifter buckets and jammed the lifter bucket on top of this little piece of aluminium, which in turn has completely locked up the camshaft. So the engine's trying to turn the camshaft through this chain and this gear with a huge amount of force and instantly the gear has torn its little drive peg off and started winding the tension of this bolt up until it sheared the bolt off and then the whole assembly is dropped into the front cover and then the chains completely come off. So chains come off, cams jammed, valves are hanging in midair, piston smacks the valve and that's all over. So we're not even a week after the race meeting and this is Rick's engine almost ready to go onto the dyno. So the block's been stripped down, taken off and had a light hone. 
brought back here, washed, all measured up again. New pistons have gone in, a replacement set of cylinder heads have gone on, and obviously all of the broken bits and the items that are high on life or out of life have been replaced. So the stage that the guys are at here are doing the cam timing uh, before it goes on the dyno. So when we homologate an engine with supercars, all of these things have a very small tolerance. So we've got to set the inlet and the exhaust cam which is a little bit unusual because the Ford and the Holden engine obviously just has one cam with the lobes fixed, but we can actually separate our inlet and exhaust cam timing. So that has to be very accurate, a very small tolerance, and if supercars take the engine back and test it and then check the cam timing and it's not what it should be, we're obviously in breach of the rules. So the guys do a very good job of taking their time here and then they'll check it again once the engine's been run in on the dyno before it gets sealed and goes into the race car. So what we have here, a huge uh, degree wheel which is on the crankshaft and you'll see a little pointer here that gives us top dead center and we work that out with this dial indicator here that is fired straight down into the, the plug hole on, um, on the cylinder and sets top dead center for your degree wheel. Then we have a dial gauge on both the inlet and the exhaust cam and the adjustment here on these cam gears to set the timing up exactly where we want it. So if we come around and have another look at what, what's happened here, you can see unlike the Ford and the Holden engine, they have a camshaft in the centre driven from the crank, they have a lifter, a push rod, a rocker and then the valve. So there's a lot of things to wear out and a, and a lot of maintenance. This is quite a simple engine being the quad cam engine. All we have is a camshaft, the lifter bucket and that sits straight on top of the valve. So very reliable and um, a lot less stress through the valve train in this engine than a, than a two valve engine. So you can see in there the lifter buckets and there's a little bit of clearance for oil and things to move around the bottom. That's where the piece of material jammed, locked up the cam and started breaking all of the components. So we're probably two hours away from having this engine um, timed up. All it needs is the manifold on, covers over, down to the dyno and hopefully we'll be making some horsepower by lunchtime.